Hello everyone, Chef Ray here and welcome, welcome back to the YouTube channel for yet another amazing recipe. And today we're going to be making this absolutely delicious Halloween themed cake. And at first my brother asked me why I'm making this cake and I'm not even white. But it's a great way of testing your baking skills and your cake decorating skills. It's an absolutely amazing cake. So we're gonna start with the cake batter itself. So here I'm just doing a base lemon cake. So I added some margarine along with some sugar and some lemon zest to a large mixing bowl. And I just wanted to whip that up on a moderately high speed just until it decided to look light and fluffy. Halfway through the process, do not hesitate to scrape down the bowl just to get that margarine that's stuck on the sides, mixing with everything else so that you have a beautifully homogenized butter. And while that's going, in the meantime, we can start to crack our eggs. So here I have about five eggs, four eggs, sorry. Um, so I'm just going to crack them into a large mixing bowl along with some vanilla and give them a really good mix so that you can break them up so that when they go into the batter, they are much easier to mix together. Once the batter is looking nice and fluffy, you want to slowly stream in your eggs, as just one at a time or as slowly as possible, just until it's all fully incorporated. At first it looks split and runny and all, but eventually it will come together once you scrape down the bowl. So once it's fully incorporated, it's going to take that off and you can now add our dry ingredients. So sift over some all-purpose flour along with some baking powder and then just you know, sift that over and then we can now proceed to fold the butter in as gently as possible. Please do this gently, make sure you do not end up knocking out all the air that's already present and it's just the air that we have formed throughout making this butter. And for this cake, we're going to make three different colors. That's why I'm not adding the milk as of now. We're going to use the milk as the base of our food colorings. So add your butter into three different mixing bowls. If you divide this butter evenly by three, you'll get 300 grams for each. And here I'm doing green, orange, and black. It's completely up to you what color you decide to do. But this is the color to went for because it's Halloween themed and all. Uh, so for the first one, I added like half a tablespoon of milk. And then I went in with about almost the whole container of orange food coloring. I'm just using the normal powdered stuff you'd find in the supermarket. So it's completely accessible. And add more than you think you're going to need. Because you really need to make something that's super concentrated. So that when the, it goes into the butter itself, it's about actually able to provide some nice bright looking colors and you don't need to buy any bougie gel colors just get the normal one you can get usually like 20 bobs get two of them you'll only use one but you can use them for the next time so once you're done dyeing the, the red, once you're done dyeing the orange one you can now side work on the green one so just the same procedure uh i'm also using powdered green food coloring once again so just add it to a little bit of milk and fold it all together now the problem comes in reading black black is a very sensitive color per se and i highly do suggest you use gel food coloring for black it's a bit pricey but if you can get your hands on gel food coloring or even liquid even better um just not powdered stuff but if that's all you can get it's fine it'll work fine but it won't be as dark or conk like gel food color so add it to some milk and fold it in and we have all of our three colors ready you could even do four colors and do orange uh green black and white but i just wanted three and you can just start to layer so just over do all the colors laid on top of one another and then just gently spread that out you want to bake this at 180 degrees uh fan assisted for about 25 to 30 minutes keep an eye on it don't open it too early because it's going to collapse but just keep a gentle eye on it once it starts to pull away from the sides of the tin and it just becomes all clean it's done take it out let it cool for about 15 minutes in the pan and then flip it out onto a layer of cling film and then wrap it up with more cling film while the cake is still warm it should be at the point where you can touch the the pan with your hand and get a bit burnt but you shouldn't be like scorching straight out of the knee of the oven pop it into the freezer overnight because this is a more of a two-day process so it makes it easier to do the work spread about and it's going to help trap all the moisture that's inside the cake and keep it nice and moist pop it into the freezer and you can work on our ganache or the outside of the cake that's the icing we're using for today so you want to add some about 350 grams of dark chopped dark chocolate and then to that we're going to add in some cream so we need to heat up our cream so it's nice and hot so it ends up melting all of the chocolate you have in there so here i'm using dairy based creams uh just the whole can i went with um i went with what's his name dairy land whatever so whenever you're buying creamers from market the dairy stuff you sure you need to shake it a little bit if it's liquid 
just know it's okay but if it's thick and it's barely shakeable do not buy it it is probably split and terrible so do keep an eye slightly shake it a little bit and if it is in liquid form you'll feel in here it's fine so uh add it to your chocolate and then give it a really good mix until it's all fully melted at first it looks split but eventually it will come together so once it's still nice and warm you're gonna add in your black food gel you don't even need to add a lot at this stage a teaspoon is enough because the longer it sits the darker the color it will be so it will form a nice dark color overnight so cover it with some cling film all the way on the top and then pop it in the fridge overnight and the next day we can start to actually decorate this cake and they can actually look super creamy and dark and it's amazing yeah uh you could totally do milk chocolate for this but then you'll have to use more black food coloring it'll taste better but it's entirely up to you how much you want to use so you're gonna top add it all into a large piping bag and then this is what you're gonna use generally decorate the cake and i'll leave links for all of these baking equipment where you can get them in a ruby i leave this a website where i get all of them it's really it's affordable and they do door to step delivery we don't have time to go to town so fill it up all the way to the top you only want to fill it up with halfway because this is what you're going to use for our crumb coat and filling and yeah that's done set it off to the side and we can now work on some other components now for this cake i decided i was gonna do a cream cheese filling this is a cream cheese filling that has sat that has been in the freezer for a while and i thought i really need to use it up it is basically cream cheese uh, icing sugar and whipping cream it's really nice tastes gorgeous it's amazing if you obviously probably do not have cream cheese filling lying around in your fridge so i'll leave a link to a recipe you can use in the description box below so we can make our simple syrup so combine some water and some sugar pop that in the microwave and once it's nice and hot give it a good stir until it's all nice and melted this is going to help keep the cake moist for a couple of days so you don't even have to rush yourself in eating it because it's very big so uh once you have your cake layers out of the freezer and unwrapped from the cling film we're just take a knife and gently score the sides and run it through and through keeping the knife straight and uh, following the markings you had made earlier until you form the two beautiful layers of cake i'm doing basically doing a four layer cake but if you do not want to take the risk and uh <laughs> end up cutting it funny just leave it as two layers it'll be absolutely delicious so we're gonna start with the first layer go with a bit of ganache and then add in your first layer of cake brush over some simple syrup to keep it moist and delicious for a few days don't do too much just a little bit um, and then you're gonna just gently pipe a ring of ganache all around the edges of the cake it's gonna help trap the cream cheese filling so it doesn't just like spew out everywhere it's a really good neat trick and it helps keep the cake stable add in a few dollops of your cream cheese filling and then just gently spread it out into the cake and then it can now go over with our next layer and just want to repeat the process over and over and over and over again um if you don't want to do cream cheese you can do strawberries whatever just google something that tastes good it will be amazing trust me so uh, once you're done stacking the whole cake i suggest you freeze it for a bit just to help it become easier when you're coming to crumb coat it at this point the cake was still a little bit shaky so i decided to stick a dowel in the center and then continue to decorate because it's very wonky like very very wonky so um here's my brother attempting to do it he said he's a pro so he can do it on his own so just let him uh he did a fairly good job as you can see um, so the cake is moving around a lot uh it's just to make your ganache a lot softer than mine so just heat it up in the microwave so uh once you've gotten a solid crumb coat it doesn't have to be pretty at all um pop it into the freezer until it's nice and firm and then go over with your ganache the last layer of ganache this one i suggest you really um melt it in the microwave just until it's nice and soft so that you have an easier time um spreading it out higher now i'm going to show you a neat trick for smoothing out cakes especially when you use ganache whipped cream or whatever so take a long palette knife and then stick it into a jug and then pour over some boiling hot water and leave it in there for um a few minutes get out your cake and this is how we're going to do it since the ganache is chocolate based um we need to get a shiny smooth outer layer and to do that you just need to basically kind of melt it so we just use like a hot metal you need to smooth everything out 
and it works like a charm just take it out of the hot water wipe it out wipe it with some tissue paper and then just go around until you have a nice and smooth layer you can keep dipping it back and forth into the hot water until you have a nice smooth layer as you can see here it's a super nice trick you can use it for any buttercream or frosting that you have now next we're gonna do like the webbing like the spider webs it's usually on the outside of the cake the outside of like a spider but i don't know how to describe it so add some marshmallows into a large mixing bowl and i'm just gonna add it into the mic put it into the microwave for like 20 something seconds it's just gonna start to puff up and it's going to be nice and melty uh <laughs> in the microwave or on the stove depending on what you like and then once it's out you want to add a little bit of water and give it a really good mix just until it's nice and melted and gooey and delicious this is what you're going to use to add that sort of webby texture and i don't know what else you can do for this i think maybe white chocolate white chocolate seems like a really good idea just take the white chocolate melt it and then just go wow wow around round, 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 round. uh that should do the trick i think yeah so um just take your marshmallow just want to show you guys how exactly you're going to go about this it's gonna press it in between your fingers and stretch it out yeah um and then just go around all the heat doing that it takes a lot of confidence because it could either turn out really pretty or very ugly so um at this point you just need to be extremely careful and uh, strategic with the way you're putting over those webs i'm not 100 percent proud of how this cake turned out it's still okay um but it could have been better that's my thinking yeah and then i added over some gold leaf all around the cake around the white stuff and the black cake because a little bit of contrast and brightness there's something to stick and be like wow it's gold it's pretty it's really amazing um and then of course i added over some chocolate bats i just piped over a template with some cling film and i just made some bath um this is just an extra decoration you could buy them whatever and basically you're done um i hope you give this recipe a try and if you do please tag me i'd love to see your creations and yeah make sure you like subscribe comment uh what you think of this cake or <laughs> anything you wanted to comment and i'll see you guys next week for yet another amazing recipe hope you give it a try and yeah see you then